questions are on the phone and I'll be answering. So I'll be looking at my phone sometimes. So don't be offended. Yeah, I think I will answer the most asked questions. Someone said, why didn't you accompany Miss Trudy to America? I mean, Miss Trudy going to America was actually my trip. I was invited by YouTube to attend the US Africa Summit. Uh, but I had a contract which the deadline was also near. So I had to just go under the contract. Yeah, so I had to convince Trudy to go to America and I would join her on Monday. But when I went for the contract, I think I felt like the video would be filmed in a day, but we ended up spending two days in filming the video. I arrived in Accra and I felt so tired, so weak. And I had to call Trudy to tell her, I'm so sorry, I cannot join you. But you just go for all the meetings for me on my behalf. And yeah, um, that's basically what happened. Uh, I was just supposed to be at the US Africa Summit. And currently she's actually there enjoying herself as a holiday because she has been in ghana for quite a long time so she deserves it i mean she needs that break if you don't know miss trudy is my wife just go check out the link in the description subscribe and be part of her awesome channel as she shows you her trip around america somebody say you're very humble what's the secret am i humble do you think i'm humble i don't know i think i was born this way i Maybe if you define that as humble, yeah, that's okay. But I think my dad has always been my mentor, the way my dad lived his life. Uh, just, I mean, living my life like my dad. So I don't know if that is humble. But yeah, um, thanks for the compliment. Thank you. This one, this one made me laugh, man. Do you have plans for your wife and kids relocate finally to America? Hell no. <laughs> This shouldn't be a question to ask someone like Guatemala because I'm telling the diaspora to come back home and invest. How do you expect? I, I, I don't understand. I, I preach. I practice what I preach, right? So definitely it's a big no. I will live in Africa, invest in Africa, um, develop Africa and help build Africa. Yeah. <laughs> do you miss China? Yes. I miss China sometimes. Um, I had a very good time in China. Everything that I know right now, I think I learned it in China. I discovered myself when I was in China. Like I went to China without knowing anything. So China shaped my life. China built me up. China made me who I am today. I, I miss China, the food, the people. Everything about China, I miss it. The only thing that I, I hate about China, the fact that the racism was uh, quite intense when you're in China. And apart from that, the people are amazing, man. And um, someday, why not? Hey, Someone is asking, what is your biggest goal for 2023? Wow. I think, like I said earlier, this year was a resting year for me. And 2023 is going to be bigger. We're going to be traveling to more countries. I think I took 2022 as a case study. When I hit a million, I was a bit exhausted. So I didn't want to pressure myself in trying to create content every day so the main target is to hit two million this year and doing so we have to create more content every day so we're gonna start like I mean as early as first January we'll be bringing your videos and next year no matter what we are going to the Caribbean because finally we got the visas that will enable us to hit the Caribbean. I know you don't need visa to visit the Caribbean countries, but you need to do transit and you need visa for that. So that's what we'll be doing. Uh huh. Mine is not a question, but just compliment you. Trudy is glowing. Thanks for loving her. Oh wow, that's beautiful. But I thought some people are saying that Trudy should run for her life because I, I, I made her look like a village girl. I mean, whatever, whatever you do, people will always talk about it, no matter how good you are, no matter how bad you are, no matter how helpful you are, people will always read meanings to whatever you do. And this is more like the master bedroom. It looks huge, man. Very huge. Tayo Aina is saying, send me money. Bro, the richest YouTuber in the whole of Africa is asking me to send him money. Dude, respect yourself. <laughs> Someone say, Maya, what is happening with your views? Let me tell you what's happening to my views. Anytime I travel to a new country, yeah, 
people want to see the new country so no matter what video you upload from that new country you're gonna get the views but if you don't travel because this whole channel is about travel content right so if you don't travel and you're still giving people content yeah it's your loyal audience that's gonna watch it but the more you travel the more viewers you get i i know how this thing works check about uh, our videos from zimbabwe it got a lot of views because we went to a new country check about our videos where we went to gambia early this year it got views because like when you go to a new country people wants to watch you but when you step out of the country or maybe when you are in your own country it's just the regular views that you get but when you go to new countries that's when you gain new audience so someone saying how do you stay focused on the goal when all hope is lost it can be very challenging sometimes extremely challenging sometimes but know why you started and use that as the only hope that you have to focus on where you're going i hope that answer was a good one i don't know but yeah um Do you think the youth is doing enough to save the continent? I think yes, but it's not that enough. And I know and believe that there are a lot of youth of Africa that are trying their possible best to put the continent on the map. But there are a lot of challenges that are hindering them from putting the continent on the map. I don't know if, if because I feel like we need support. Look at example myself you know traveling from different african countries to promote africa at least we should get the support of the funding to move from one place to another but no no one is supporting you you have to use your own resources to make it happen the youth of africa are doing a lot like there's so many people that have uh, that became farmers but i think they need help but the help is not coming so they have to use the little that they have to put the continent on the map. In Africa, it's more like each one for himself, God for us all, and which I think it's so sad. And um, I, I've met a lot of people who have ideas, man. They have great ideas, but the support is not coming. So I would say whatever idea that you have, keep working on it by yourself, little by little. I mean, I believe that someday the continent will see what you do and I appreciate what you do, man. Wow, this question. This lady is asking me, how are you? I know it might be a very simple question, but sometimes people just want to hear this. Thank you. I would say I'm getting better. I've not been fine for a very long time, but I have to stay strong for myself, my family, and to you as a YouTube audience. I've been through a lot of tough times in 2022, very tough times, tough times that could easily break me down but all I do is to pick myself up and focus. Uh, sometimes you meet people on the street, they will see you smiling, but when you come back home, it's full of tears, you know? But one thing that I always say, I have an anchor that keeps the soul, and that anchor has been holding me tight till now and he never disappoint me he always come true for me that's why i always say no one anywhere else can tell me that god does not exist trust god keep moving and everything will be all right yeah <laughs> so the whole house is a, a four bedroom house so we have um, another room in here which I think it's, it's very spacious, right? I think so, very spacious, yeah. And all the rooms are in suits, so if you have a family, you can move in here with your family. This is the third bedroom which is also in seats. Yeah, so it's pretty much done. Yeah, it is what it is, man. Someone is saying, what is your biggest fear in life? Wow, 
I don't want to die without having an impact in the society. I don't want to die without knowing that my life never impacted anyone. I don't want to die without God, man. No, I don't want to die without having Christ in me. That is my biggest fear. That's it. Someone is saying, I'm just curious. Why don't you like to drive a car? You know what? I don't have a car, so I don't think I need to know how to drive. Or maybe I need to drive so that I will pray that I own a car someday. Is that what you're telling me? Um, yeah, that was just by the way, but I'm just, um, I, I feel like if I own a car, I feel like car is not an investment. Car is just maybe a necessity, something that you need, right? So at the end of the day, when you own a car, you'll be like, hey, I think there's a latest car in town. Let me go buy that one. So I was just trying to discipline myself. I mean, get all the necessary investment that I need to do. And at the end of the day, I'll go get myself a car. I think right now, it, the time is due to get myself a car. So pr probably you're going to see me driving. And also, I have mentors, right, who actually prevented me from buying a car. I think I have three mentors who said, you don't need it. You don't need to. I don't think this is the right time for you to own a car. So because of that, that's why you've never seen me driving. And I always want, love to sit in people's car. But very soon, you see me driving my own car, yeah? Hold on. The time will come. So this is the visitor's, the visitor's washroom. So if people come and visit you, this is where to use. And um, yeah. This whole area is definitely gonna be your dining. So you're gonna, yeah, um, eat in here if you want to. They're actually working on the kitchen cabinet. So, somewhere within the week, this house will be ready. So this is the, this is the smallest room or the only room down here. This one is locked because we got stuffs in there, so it's locked. So, and they are all in suits. Um, someone is asking, how did you become who you are today? Hard work and trust in God. The consistency. And it's not easy. I think uh, people who knew me since I started this platform, will be so proud of me. People who saw my struggle days in China will be so proud of me. Like I started this journey with a Samsung guys too. What is that? Tony Mega. She can speak English. She can speak English. Oh my God! Just relax. Let me oh. do this. I'm telling you. That's why I told you to learn Chinese. Oh boy. Hey, menu. Hey, 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 hey. My whole life is vision, right? So I set target among, like, I, I set target, like, oh, uh, in the next year, this is what I want to do. The next two years, this is what I want to do. Like, I think when I got married, a lot of people got shocked. No, it's part of my year plan to get married, no matter what. Like I said, this year has been a tough year, but I still got married because it's part of my year plan. So I don't joke, I set target, and when the time is right, I need to make it happen. That is what am I. So for me, I would say hard work, resilient, and uh, knowing why you started what you do, that's what brought me this far. And never forget God. I don't want to tell you anything. For me, I think it's God's grace, man. Thank you. Someone, someone is saying, you have proven that there are great places in Africa to live. How are you doing today? I'm fine, my brother, and thanks for asking. Someone is saying, take care of yourself and your family. Thank you. Um, mine is not going to be a question, but a word of encouragement. I just want to tell you that I love what you do. Thank you. And if you also love what I do, encourage me in the comment section because it's very important. Man. If you are to rule the whole world, what rule will you add to the world? Be nice to everybody, no matter who you are. That's all I'm going to add to it. If you all can be nice to each other, the world will be a better place for us all. 
Someone is saying, when are you going to the US? I think connecting with your fans and the African diaspora will be great. It's something that I'm planning. That's one of the reasons why I even abort the mission of going to the US yesterday. Because, listen, when I go to the US, I know I've got a lot of audience in the US. And when I come to the US, I really want to meet each and every one of you so that I'll be able to tell your stories and connect them to Africans on the continent. And not just the US, and even in the Caribbean. A lot of people are asking me, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you for asking. How do you stay consistent with your passion without being bored doing the same thing over and over again? I think meeting different people with different ideas doesn't make it boring. Imagine spending time with Casa Preco. Will you be bored? And coming back home and spending time with my wife to create content, will I be bored? Or even if I leave my wife home, I go out and I meet another YouTuber, which for me, my content is more like whatever is happening. Like I don't plan my videos, there's no script attached to my YouTube videos, so I don't go with the script, like the video I'm doing right now. There's no script attached. Whatever comes into my mind, that's what I say. It's the rest of the work is on my editor. So I hardly get bored of doing the same thing over and over. I, I basically feel like I don't do the same thing over and over again. Because I always sit down, think about what I need to do, go out there, and just go with the flow. Whatever comes out, yeah, voila. That's how it's supposed to be. Someone is saying, do you pay for your flight? You're always flying. <laughs> you are blessed. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you too, man. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. Yeah. My name is Musa. Musa. From the Gambia. The Gambia? Yes. I don't travel alone. I travel with two people. And, you know, we pay for our own flight. I mean, I pay for it. Because I feel like sometimes when you want to work with brands, right, the brands tell you what to do. The brands limit your freedom of speech. The brands limit, I mean, limit your voice. Because sometimes you see something wrong, you want to say it. Now, because you're working for a particular brand, you can't say it, right? So I decided to uh, pay for my own uh, flight ticket. That's what I do. And I think it gives us the power to be free. I mean, freedom cannot be paid for right so uh, i pay everything by myself man when are you visiting uganda i want to visit uganda again because the last time i went to uganda oh, wait wait uh -huh. kampala 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 you going to kampala 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 i was um deported but i would love to go back to Uganda, because I've seen a lot of people who are farming in Uganda that I would love to tell their story, especially the doctor who is into uh, poultry farming in um, Uganda. You're amazing, brother. And I love your videos, and I can't wait to spend time with you. Do you have Christ in your life? I mean, do you worship God? Of course. And I, I'm not shy to let people know that I have Christ in me. I don't know, because... My whole life, man, I don't know. I don't know what will make me change my mind. I know I've been meeting so many people who tell me that God does not exist, Christianity is not real, um, Christ is a fairy tale. You can believe in whatever you believe in. I'm not here to challenge you. But what I've seen, what I've experienced, I mean, the encounter that I've had with God, I mean, the time that um, God has come through for me, there's no way, there's no day I'm going to stand somewhere and say that. God does not exist. I'm going to say that, oh, Christ is a fairy tale story. Yeah, you can believe in whatever you believe in, but don't force what you believe on me because I have what I believe in, and I believe that what I believe in is taking me to all the places that I've been to. Yeah? This is a living area. So, probably your TV is going to be here, and um, yeah, your sofas are going to be here and you're gonna have a great time when you buy this house contact the numbers on the screen to <laughs> how much is your net worth <laughs> i recently googled myself and i saw my net worth and i'm like hey are you in my pocket 
Uh, basically, I can show you my account right now. Uh, when I tell people that I'm broke, they don't believe me. So let me just show you guys how much I have in my account. I have three account details and I'm gonna show you guys that I'm the brokest YouTuber alive. Um, I'm just gonna be so real with you guys, man. See, this is 3,400 Ghana City. This is my dollar account, 0 0.04. And this is my another dollar account, 0 0.32. Believe me, this money was just sent by O'Shea Duke Jackson. See, this money that I have, even in my account, I had only 200 cities just now. O'Shea just sent me 3,323. O'Shea just sent me this money. Monsieur Duke Jackson, thank you so much. And this is what I'm saying. So that's what I'm saying. Support our trips across Africa. The last time I said, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Please like this video. It means a lot to me. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on your post notifications so that anytime we upload a video, you'll be notified. Traveling in Africa is extremely expensive, but we are trying our possible best to put Africa on the map. Please donate a dollar on our GoFundMe page or our Patreon page to support our African travels. Thank you so much and I appreciate you all. People are like, oh, it's your work. How do you expect us to give you a dollar? And I'm like, oh my God. See, support us. We need it. Believe me or not, even 50 cents can buy us water when we travel from one country to another. Like traveling in Africa, just one ticket by myself, yeah, it costs no less than $900 or $1,000, one person. This is not like runway, it's just one way. Imagine we three, we go accommodation and everything. And I told Africans that, hey, support our travels and somebody saying it's your work. Go work and get your own money to travel. What can I do to help our motherland like you? Wow, that's a very touching question. I'm saying that we should all be part of the change that we are looking for on the continent. The continent needs all of us. I mean, come and visit, survey around, and you will definitely see the problem. And when you see a particular problem, you have to find a way of solving even one of them. And I believe that it's gonna go a long way. I cannot tell you what to do, Believe me, the continent needs industrial revolution. Believe me, the continent needs uh, agricultural revolution. The continent needs a lot of stuff, man. Even if you go to the villages, it's extremely sad. You see students sitting under trees, and I would love to help, but one person, you can't do it all. And this is why we're pleading our government that, hey, take care of your own instead of taking care of yourself and your family members. <laughs> How is success built? I'm really stranded over how life is all about. I don't think I'm the best person to answer how success is being built. Success can be a very lonely journey. I mean, people will not understand your vision. People will not understand your mission. People will misinterpret your mission, but keep going. And don't think that on your way to the top, you can go with your friends supporting you. Hell no. You're going all by yourself. And you might meet people along the way, but those people will come through for you, but they won't be there forever. They're more like a seasonal kind of people that were there to support you to go to the next stage. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> when will you visit Eritrea? I think next year I will be in Eritrea because next year we're traveling to a lot of countries. Two weeks in every country, but I mean visa access to Eritrea is a bit tough. So if you can help us, let me know. You can send me an email and then we're going to take it from there. Just want to let you know Africa is proud of you and your team. Thank you. And I'm more proud of my team because they do all the work. For me, all I do is to come here and talk and they take over from there. But next year, you will see a lot from us. Why is Africa so poor that we can't unite to rule our various countries well? Wow. Anytime I talk about unity of Africa, I get sad because I don't know why we can't unite as a continent. 
I don't know if you guys are seeing what is happening all the time. It's Africa-US summit, Africa-China uh, summit, Africa-Russia summit, Iran-Africa summit. But even them, they know that individual countries are not powerful unless we come together collectively, you know, as Africa. But yet, we, won't, we are not ready to sit down and say, let's make Africa a country so that we'll be powerful, trade among ourselves. Because if we trade among ourselves, the world will be scared. Africa will be a powerhouse. I know that for sure. Because I I imagine trading oil with Nigeria. Imagine trading oil with South Sudan. Imagine trading gold from Ghana. Imagine Ivory Coast and Ghana trading cocoa. I imagine Kenyans bringing their, uh, what do you call it, they are flowers to Ghana. Imagine they, they got fresh milk from Namibia. Namibian got meat. Imagine them bringing their meat to Ghana or taking it to Nigeria. Listen, the world will be scared of us. But I don't know why the leaders are not thinking about that. But someday, the generation that we are right now will definitely make it happen. I don't know why I didn't know this man, man, George Aite. I was researching about him recently and he said... Um, the current generation of Africa are the cheetah generation. They are willing to put Africa on their back and run with it. Be a cheetah generation because Africa is behind you and carry Africa to the right place and the whole world will come and see the Africa that they've never seen before. What is your most favorite things about being married? I think marriage actually keep me focused in terms of being focused on achieving set goals uh, yeah I mean anytime you go out anytime you travel you always want to come back because you know that you have a wife at home uh, I don't know what is the favorite thing about it but I think marriage is beautiful man uh, waking up knowing that you got your best friend beside you legally Um, I think I got a lot of questions. Someone is saying, would you like to work as an aeronautical engineer in the near future in any country uh, if the opportunity opens up? I don't know if you guys know that I'm professionally, I'm an aeronautical engineer. Uh, I started practicing for a year until I decided to call it a quit to focus on my passion. But I don't think um, where I am right now, I really want to work for anyone else again because, I mean, being an engineer, that would be cool, yeah? solving problems. But I don't think I'll be the first guy to build a new plane. I mean, they've built a plane already, right? I think for me, I always want to make impact in people's life. Yeah, I always want to inspire the world, right? But I feel like being an engineer is just from one place to another. How am I going to inspire the world? So I think the calling that I found on being a YouTuber, speaking to people every day, I mean, meeting new people, I think it's enough. And through that, I've been able to build my own businesses. So, ah, engineering. What will you advise people who wants to move to Ghana or any other African country? See, before you move, travel to the country, do your own research. I mean, figure it out if this is the right place for you to move because you cannot move in the year and say that oh i gave up i'm going back to my country that's not how it works so i normally tell people africa is huge we have 54 countries on the continent don't just come and say that you want to live in ghana no there are so many countries but you can even travel five or six countries and then pick your favorite one and move to that country this is the advice that i always tell people man being a village boy and now sitting beside millionaires or wealthy people by the blessings of Almighty God, what comes into your mind as a village boy like me? I normally thank God anytime I meet successful people that I know and believe that even in 50 years of my lifetime, I won't be able to meet such people. So I believe that God's grace has been sufficient enough in my life. Um, it's not by my deeds, that's why these people are opening up to me because when I met the, the owner of Casa Preco, you know what he told me? He's like, Maya, I don't grant interviews, but I'm doing this interview because of you. And I was like, what have I done? It's just God's grace in your life. When I met Innocent Motors, I did the video. You know what he called? After the video, he called me. 
He said, my son. I'm like, yes. He said, let me tell you something. You look so small, but you are mighty. What you have done, I've paid so much money and they couldn't do it. You know, and you don't expect me to say that, oh, I did all this thing by myself. Even when I'm interviewing people, I don't even know the next question to ask them. Because I used to get scared. I used to shiver when I meet successful people. You have no idea. I mean, some, some of you will be like, oh, Maya was not prepared for this interview. Yes, I was not prepared. But at the end of the day, even sitting down with them was a bit shaky. I mean, you, you can spend time with somebody who owns mansions, who owns properties, and you, you ask yourself, you don't even have a car. You're sitting down with these people. But I'll always say, God has been faithful to me. And I will always give him the glory, no matter where I find myself. I mean, especially when I meet people telling me that, oh, I came to Africa because of your videos. I will say, thank you. But I know it's God using me to call his people back home. I, I, you won't believe that when I'm shooting a YouTube video, I don't know what I'm going to say. You won't believe that when I'm shooting a video, I, I don't know what is the next word that is going to come out of my mouth. All I do, I stand in front of the camera, and I say, God, your servant is right in front of you. Speak through me. And most of you will listen and will be like, oh my God, I changed my mind. I want to move to the continent. It's not what am I. Yes, yeah. It, it, I, but whenever you're praying, pray for me. Because I feel like God has given me a job that is way bigger than me. But the journey is long, but we'll go together. No matter what happens. Maya. After being a YouTuber, are you going to work in a real estate for yourself? No. My wife will be a real estate developer. I have a bigger goal than just being on YouTube. Yeah, being on YouTube was a step, but I really want to impact in a lot of people's life. I really want to change the way the world see Africa. I really want to change the lives of Africans. Guess what I want to be after YouTube? I've got like four years remaining, and right after four years, I'm not going to let you guys know the plan, but there are bigger things ahead. No real estate. Real estate, yeah, it's going to be a side job. My wife is going to take care of that. You've traveled to too many countries in Africa. Which country inspired you? Either its people or development. And what is your advice to the African youth? So I've been to 25 African countries. And each and every country is unique in its own way. But one of the countries that I loved and I appreciate so much is Rwanda and Namibia. Why? Because the system works in these countries. Namibia got the best roads in the whole of Africa, which I believe that a lot of African countries need to start investing in road development so that our food will not get spoiled, right? Because, see, some countries, to, from the farm to the house, by the time you get to the house, the whole uh, food is being destroyed. I mean, we need to um, learn to travel within our own countries via road, of which some of countries you can't boast of that. Rwanda, because it's the, it's the cleanest country in Africa, and I wish so many countries can learn from Rwanda or emulate what Rwanda and Namibia has been able to do. Um, is someone is saying that uh, it's people, country, they were the nicest people. I think I'll go for Nigeria. Um, people are so hospitable. I think any time I go to Nigeria, I feel like I'm a celebrity, of which I don't even feel like that in my own country. So, I mean, hospitality, I give it to Nigerians. And when it comes to infrastructure in terms of um, more skyscrapers, I'll give it to Kenya and South Africa. So how do you manage all the hate comment and some misconception of your content? First of all, when it comes to hate comment, right, I'm already used to it. I used to live in China. I mean, the country that when you upload a video, I say 30% of the comment are hate comment. So I've, I grew a tough skin before coming to Africa. So whatever people do, for me, all I do is I keep quiet and I listen to you, right? I, I mean, you can insult me. You can say whatever you want to say that what am I has done this. I, I, I feel like silence is the best option for you all. So, I keep quiet. I would never come in here to explain myself because I know that there is no truth in what you're saying. Because there's so many things that have happened to me on YouTube. People know that when 
they come out to say something about Maya, they're going to get views, right? So they just take advantage of it. Every day, what am I has done this to the extent that people are going in a stream of forging that I impregnated them. And I'm like, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I mean, this is how extreme people can go. So for me, even if you write a hate comment, I always want to see a positive content out of your negative comment. That is me. Because I always make people's negative remarks become my source of what? Motivation or inspiration. I, I can go back a bit, like when I used to live in China, my own classmate laughed at me because of a YouTube video. M my own friends used to laugh at me because of a YouTube video, because I create YouTube content. How do you think I was able to survive? Because I made those laughing remarks became my source of motivation. You're not perfect as a content creator, but listen, people will always talk. You can say that, hey, I think the sky is blue, and somebody say, hey, why are you lying? The sky is black. That is content creation. You need to grow a thick skin for it. If you are not ready to be on YouTube or if you're not strong, don't come. Because listen, people can be going through a lot of tough time and they will just come on YouTube to insult you. And when it gets to you, dude, forget it. And even your fellow content creators that you're supposed to unite as one, work together, learn, learn, I mean, learn among yourselves, you know, learn from each other. You see your own content creators hating on you. What are you going to do? There's nothing you can do. You just have to relax, be silent, let them do their thing. And believe me, the end result is what matters. Um, someone saying, and some misconception of your content. I think this is very important. I think I've filmed a lot of videos that when the videos come out, people have their own meanings to the content that you did. I think my top one was the Himba uh, uh, video, people saying that, oh, you took advantage of them. I didn't even monetize that video. People were saying that I lied, uh, that the Himbas don't offer sex for tourists or whatever, visitors. Listen, the words did not come out of my mouth. It came out from a Himba guy's mouth. What we read was, when you come in here, if you come to the Himba village, mm -hmm. Like, as he just explained, a man can give the wife to a friend, my brother, okay, yo, take care of him, mm -hmm. sexually. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes. I went to Namibia again. I asked exactly the same question to a Namibian uh, Himba guy, and he said exactly the same, we do it. Yet, people were out there saying that I'm taking advantage of a tribe and all of that. See, no matter what you do, people will always have something to date. Get used to that. Would you ever consider going into politics or being an ambassador or a diplomat? I think I'm an unofficial ambassador for the continent. Whether they like it or not, I'm doing what I can in my own way to change the negative narrative of Africa. Diplomat? I don't know. Do you think I deserve a diplomatic passport? I think, I, I, think I, I, I really deserve a diplomatic passport. You don't think so? And um, you ever going into politics? We'll talk about that one later, yeah? I know and believe that someday, I, I, I don't want to be a politician or something, but I want to be that guy who has influence to change things in a country. What do you plan to do once you travel all the African countries? I think I will sit back bring more people to continue where I left on one platform. That's incredible, right? <laughs> ah, a lot of questions, jeez. How often do you burn out as a content creator? Currently, I'm, I'm burn out. Currently, I'm burn out. And how do you handle it? I take some time off, just like what I'm doing. So yeah. And my final question, what is your biggest dream? This question was asked by Vanessa Kambi. My biggest dream is to see Africans traveling from one country without a passport. I, I want to see Africans traveling from different African countries, even with a passport, but not visas. I want to see Africans investing in different African countries. I want to see Africans trading among themselves. I want to see Africans marrying among themselves. I want to see Africans removing barriers. I want to see Africans seeing themselves as one. I want to see Africans knowing that Africa belongs to them and it's time for them to cherish it. Do you cherish Africa? Are you doing your possible best to change the narrative of Africa? What are you doing to help develop Africa? 
My name is Watermaya, and I hope I, I've tried. I think I've answered not most, but some. And I know that I'll be back here again to answer more questions. Feel free, like this video, subscribe, and be part of this awesome channel. And also, if you're looking for a house to buy in Ghana, buy this house. Yeah, I've reduced the price. And listen, it costs a lot of money, and I don't intend to make more money out of this. It's a luxury property, and I know and believe that it's going to be a good investment. I'll see you all in the next one. Uh, yeah, bye. Hi. Hi. I'm everywhere. Oh, so you are most welcome. Thank you. I did see. I, that's 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 why I'm telling you guys I need to plant fruits in there, man. Because you need you need this. Oh, but the tree is good. You can have trees. Hmm. Are you from Water Region? My husband is. Yeah. Was in the past. Oh. Yeah, so rest in perfect. But he planted all the trees. This is from water region. Yes. Ha, ah, you see? <laughs> you see? Yeah, really you, see? Well and you see that I know. Yeah, all of us, so I know how it tastes. <laughs> I know the taste that yeah, this is from water yes. region. Ah, it's yeah. like now you are you are Votarian. Yes. Yeah, I love this. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> if you want the best coconut in Ghana. Go to the water. Yeah. <laughs>